In this Climate Gen Bulletin, I speak with Dr Jennifer Francis about her new work looking at weather whiplash events that she and colleagues have been studying in the North Atlantic and Europe. We also discuss the outlook for 2024 as climate impacts worsen and world leaders from across the world are doubling down on expanding the root cause of the problem, fossil fuels. If you want to find out more about the failing COP process and why we urgently need to hold those delaying structural change directly accountable, you can pre-order my book, Cop Out, on Amazon or any other bookstore. Thanks for supporting the podcast. I will be resuming interviews again next week and fully appreciate your support. Jennifer, it's great to see you again. Thank you very much for taking the time over the holiday period. Great to see you too, Nick. Thank you. When we last spoke back in May, we discussed all kinds of things, the ocean heat waves, the likelihood of the El Nino adding extra heating, and your sort of summary slogan was expect chaos. As we look around us now, how much of what you anticipated has been realized? Well, it's always hard to say whether the, the weather events that have unfolded already this winter are weirder than normal because winter is always a volatile season and the fall too. Um, it certainly has been odd. We've had some serious flooding events just last week along the East Coast. Uh, some very heavy rain fell in especially the Northeast part and did some unprecedented flooding in Maine and New Hampshire. We've seen unprecedented heat as well in the middle of, the, of North America ongoing right now a severe lack of white Christmases (laughs) all across the Northern Hemisphere. So, you know, it's been plenty extreme, but whether it's El Nino or specific ocean heat waves or whatever, I would say it's uh, consistent, certainly, but you can't pin it on that. As you look forward to 2024, the scientists I've spoken to have said it's going to be worse. I mean, from... A European perspective, I'd say the last six months or so have been pretty bad. I mean, we've seen some horrific things in Europe in the summer and then flash flooding across Italy, Spain, all over the place, basically. So, I mean, from this perspective, it's, it seemed pretty raw in terms of extreme events. What's Absolutely. your thoughts? What's your thoughts on 2024? Yeah, so, I mean, we've fully expect El Nino to continue to remain strong for at least a few months. Um, that always tends to create some some weather havoc of various sorts in various places. Ocean heat waves are still raging out there. The Atlantic is still mostly very warm. The Arctic is very warm as well. We're expecting to see the stratospheric polar vortex undergo major disruption probably in mid-January or so, and that always brings some severe winter weather conditions, often brings cold down into Europe and and Northern Asia, even Central Asia, and eventually also to North America. So there's a lot of reasons to expect this crazy weather to continue through 2024. Um, And we're seeing, of course, the Earth on average is continuing to break records for the temperature globally and especially the oceans. So we're in uncharted territory in terms of what the earth is doing, um, what the oceans are doing. And, you know, these extreme events are certainly being exacerbated by that. Okay. And we'll come back to that in a second, but I just wanted to ask you about a recent paper that you published and you talk about weather whiplash events. And I think you focus on North, Atlantic and Europe. Can you give us a quick overview of what that means and and how it actually affects us? Yes. So weather whiplash is a term that's become kind of common lately, and it generally describes uh, when weather switches from kind of one extreme to another very abruptly. Um, What we tried to do was kind of generalize that idea and, and come up with a new way to measure it. So we, instead of looking at specific locations and looking for times when the weather shifted abruptly at that location, whether it be temperature or going from drought to flooding or something like that, we tried to take a much broader look and look at the overall circulation pattern over a region. 
And we can track things like that by looking at the jet stream and the, the pattern that the jet stream is in. And what we did was we looked for these characteristic patterns of the jet stream, and we looked for cases where the atmosphere got stuck in one particular configuration for at least four days in a row. And we know that the jet stream controls the weather. So depending on what that jet stream is doing, it's going to be dry and warm here, wet and stormy there. That's generally, you know, we know that the jet stream controls the weather. So when it gets stuck in one place for several days and then abruptly shifts to a very different pattern of the jet stream, this is what we defined as weather whiplash. And we were able to go back in time through um, observations that have been incorporated into a global weather forecasting model, actually. So we have this information going back to the late 1940s. So, you know, 72 years of data every single day. And uh, we looked for these cases where the atmosphere gets stuck in, in one of these uh, patterns for four or more days. And then when it abruptly shifts to a very different pattern. And so this is what we were tracking. And we were looking not only at the real atmosphere and data for observations from the real atmosphere, but we also looked at projections for the future uh, based on climate model simulations. And what we found was that when these patterns in the atmosphere look like a very warm Arctic situation, so the Arctic is much warmer than normal, um, we found that these weather whiplash events happen more often and that they're going to increase in frequency more in, uh, in they're going to increase much faster in those patterns when it gets stuck when the Arctic is very cold. So there seems to be this correspondence with the Arctic warming much faster than the rest of the world, uh, leading to more of these weather whiplash events. So this is a, a feature of Arctic warming, would you say, and it's going to get more pronounced? Would, would you say you're going to get increased frequency or intensity as the Arctic continues to warm? Well, that's what our results suggest, yes. So... And we know the Arctic is going to continue to warm as long as we continue to belch greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, which um, there's really no sign of that going down yet. So, yes, the idea is that we should see more of these very abrupt and often destructive um, shifts in, in weather patterns from things like a drought for you know days and days that then becomes a flooding situation like what happened in Greece this summer, as an example. Yeah, and from just what you're discussing and from what we've seen this year in terms of impacts, loss of life, loss of you know, damage to property, loss of agriculture, I mean, yes, it's been quite pronounced everywhere. How would you rate the level of urgency that policymakers should be considering regarding these risks? Um, I'd say right now that they seem to be at a level two and they need to be up at a level 10. <laughs> right. they, it is, you know, it's, that's not everyone, obviously, but um, in terms of what's actually happening on sort of national level and international levels, that urgency needs to be ratcheted up substantially. That said, I would say there are communities and smaller government organizations that are doing a lot and we're seeing a lot of progress we know that this is a possible feat we can um we can make this problem much less bad than right now the trajectory we're on but it needs to it needs to happen much faster and you know international organizations need to take it much more seriously and you know we saw some targets coming out of the, this most recent COP UN climate meeting just a couple of weeks ago, and there's a lot of you know progress, but again, it's it's way too little and way too slow. Okay, yeah, I've just returned from the COP, and one of the things that I noticed is that despite what everybody says, the COP28 president is going to continue to expand oil production in the UAE, the US, Canada, UK, Norway, Saudi Arabia, China. Russia, Australia, among others, are all expanding fossil fuel production. 
that's the opposite. I mean, they're they're literally doing the very thing that will make all of these problems worse. As someone who is diagnosing the problem and the the answer is becoming so obvious, what do you actually think when you when you hear these kinds of things? It's so discouraging. Um, you know, obviously we can't stop you know, using fossil fuels immediately, but this is exactly the wrong direction. We need to stop investing in new fossil fuel infrastructure and and phase out what is already in place. And as you say, this is exactly the wrong direction. It's very discouraging, but as I said, there are also some very strong glimmers of hope at more local levels, but um, you know, I think there's no way that we're going to avoid increased extreme weather events, increased sea level rise, um, you know, all of the things we're already seeing, as you say, it's also obvious now. Um, and there's really no way that we're going to avoid these things getting worse, at least in the next few decades, as we're on this trajectory. Obviously comes a point where communities can't recover because exactly. these, these these are getting you know repeated in the same areas exactly. etc there's been some discussion as well between scientists of whether we're accelerating the earth's heating does your research indicate any of this and how would you characterize earth heating and earth sensitivity to warming at the moment hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, clearly the warming has accelerated since the 50s, the 1950s. That is absolutely uh, 100% for sure. Um, the only controversy really is whether it's accelerated in, say, the last decade. And I would say that is not that uh, relevant. Um, and it's also not that clear because over a decade time period, there's so much up and down in the signal that it's really not that clear there's an acceleration or not. And, but, you know, it's going up. That's the main point. And if it goes up a little bit faster, that's not good news, obviously. But I think, you know, it's kind of silly to focus on something like that when the real story is we've got to stop this going up <laughs> and we've got to stop emissions from going up. We have to get them to level off and then eventually start to go down because that's the only way we're going to make this blanket that we've put around the earth this extra thick blanket right now that blanket's getting thicker and thicker as long as the amount of greenhouse gases in, is increasing in the atmosphere but if we can at least level off so that it's not getting thicker then that will start to slow the warming gradually it sounds so simple but when <laughs> in the oh, world not, the world yes. in which we live it's um it's obviously the no one no simple, one's paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. The answer is simple, but doing it is not. Okay. But if the previous message was expect chaos as we head as we head into twenty twenty four, what would be the mantra for today, do you think? Yeah. Well, it hasn't really changed. Um I don't know if chaos is the right word. I would say surprises, expect surprises, expect more broken records, expect more unprecedented weather events, expect more destruction, suffering, um, very high costs to these destructive events. You know, we're the worldwide, we're spending billions of dollars recovering from these events, and that's just going up. It's a I think the world hit a new record this year on the amount of money spent on weather disasters. So this is what we need to remember and expect, not just 2024, but going forward, it's just going to get worse. Okay. Well, on that note, I will uh, say thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Christmas break. You too. Thank you very much.